Issue 177 The story starts out with the panel being wasted as Nicole recaps stuff in narration with a cute pout, and then it's explained that in addition to the Egg Fleet attacking the Nanite City, five convicts hope to seize control from within. The minute they try to do anything for conflicts though, Nicole says that she built the city with a plan for them, and they're immediately teleported to cells. Well that was easy. Nicole then high fives Sally as I can only see half of her body inexplicably. I'm pretty surprised she's not more unhappy about that since it would make her feel a lot less real, randomly not having her feet touch the ground. After some lasers hit and Nicole looks like she's just a floating head, which really should scare people a lot more, she explains that she has to regroup the power that would normally support her 3D hologram form to the shield because Eggman isn't holding back with the barrage. So they did explain why she was losing her legs, that's good. Sally sheds a tear at how Nicole can't be around when she can't spare the energy, and says she trusts her to keep everyone safe for a while. Then both Elias and Sally order Sonic to get some medical attention first when they don't have any clear injuries, and he's very reluctant to agree for some reason, not thinking he needs it since he's so arrogant. Then we see some actual consequences to bad things happening, unlike in Unleashed, because Rotor is still injured for taking some boulders to the back for Tails. He says cheerfully that he'll be up and around after some therapy. He should have said physical therapy, I doubt the talking cure will do much for this. Sonic apologizes for not being fast enough, and Rotor says that it's okay because at least he got to be an action hero for once. I don't, I don't know if it's not being fast enough, just he didn't notice in time because he wasn't even looking in Rotor's direction. And Charmy looks like he has brain damage, wonderful. I remember people saying that Charmy was all weird in the comic. I don't really see that. This is a lot weirder than him wearing a cape randomly and Knuckles was green. This is him literally having brain damage. It wouldn't be so bad if he actually was the scrappy look in the games, but instead he's just a bland, harmless kid, so he doesn't really feel like he deserves this. Fortunately, he at least remembers who he is and who his fiance is, but even then, Dr. Quack, who's graduated to using a cane now because an eye patch wasn't hard enough on him, says that Charmy might still have some memory loss, but he seems better off than he could have hoped. When did he get hurt though? I hope he has memory loss about his Golden Hive colony, because that would make it a lot easier on him losing it. As the city gets attacked by Eggman's lasers, Scourge shows up and warns Venitivus that they might have a problem as Venitivus is saying the SA1 chant in front of Master Emerald. He says, your pet head in the bubble. <laughs> That's a pretty funny way of referring to Dimitri. He complains that Dimitri made a run for it, and then says, figuratively speaking. He says, he says that he might blab the plan of his to Knuckles, and then Phanitivus says that he was hoping he would do that, and assures him that everything's going according to plan. And Scourge, I love this, I love how he really doesn't look like he's comfortable working for this guy. He's like, alright then, you're the spooky, creepy mastermind. Bunny says that she always knew Antoine was brave deep down, and he says, and you positive? At least they got the actual vocabulary right. And Bunny says that she wouldn't have married him if she didn't think he was brave deep down. Really? Seriously? Then after Sally reminisces about how she let them into Robotropolis to take it back, she then complains bitterly about how that was back when she didn't have all sorts of princess politics stuff to deal with. And for some reason, Bunny asked if the cannon fire is getting to her, when all she did was complain once about a recurring problem in her life, and already they're acting like she's having a breakdown. Sheesh, no wonder she keeps all of her problems to herself. Surprisingly, the next panel acts like that never happened, and it goes right back to characters pointlessly reminiscing, wasting my time as if the Egg Fleet wasn't attacking. This feels kind of condescending, I mean, the force field is up, so I guess there's nothing to worry about, but shouldn't they be taking this more seriously? After Sally asks for a favor, Snively gets yelled at for taking too long with the Egg Fleet trying to take down the shields, and Eggman says he's too busy rearming his battle suit to do it himself. Snively panics about being under attack, and then after it's revealed there's no damage and a lone enemy craft is targeting, and Zavli says to hold their fire when he notices Hope flying around in a plane, she calls him a jerk, as well as her half-brother. He is? She yells at Snively that she can't bear to show her face to the Mobians now because she left Knothole on his advice. That's not really a good reason to be ashamed. 
And I'm guessing she has a radio to conveniently transmit to Snively so he can actually hear her. She says that because she can't bear to face Mobians anymore, she's going back to the human cities. More than one at once? To become the best engineer ever, and then help fight Eggman. All by herself? She ends it off saying naively, Then maybe our family name will be worth something! No, not really. I don't think one good Robotnik would cause people to forgive that. A robot tells Snively that they still have an all-weapons lock on the target, and Snively is really hesitating to fire her. She ends up being fine, by the way, although the writer was actually wondering whether or not to keep her alive. Really, he actually considered killing her off right then and there. Why? That'd be such a waste and be totally unforeshadowed for Snively. Tails' father says that aside from the bombardment over the city force field, this may be a blessing in disguise because he thinks their people need a shakeup like this to get them ready for a shift in thinking. Where are your priorities? Eggman is a huge threat right now. This isn't exactly the right time for overthrowing the royalty. And yeah, force fields. I really wish Not Whole and Mobotropolis always had those. It would've made a lot of sense. If Eggman can make them, why couldn't Rotor? At the very least, Merlin looks annoyed at Amadeus and says that the monarchy might be wound tight enough to snap at any would-be reformer. When Tails tells him Amadeus he believes in him and is on his side no matter what just because he's his father, Merlin says that's another reason for him to worry. Eggman, while trying to attack the force field with his floating battle suit, has a temper tantrum of entitlement desperate for his final victory. Ah, I could watch him act like this all day. I kinda wish he was like this for the whole series. It's so entertaining. I like that Sonic actually calls Eggman's act a tantrum. Sonic is called a fool for facing him alone outside the force field's protection, and then all of the other heroes rush up to the battle suits and Sonic is actually humble enough to realize he needed their help against them. Bunny shoots a battle suit with a laser from her cyborg limb, saying she was saving it for a special occasion, and then Sonic gives Eggman a generic, motivated hero speech, causing Eggman to be the one to tell him to shut up. Sonic then completes the humiliation, sending Eggman to the ground, and Sally orders him as the princess to retreat back to New Megapolis. When Eggman insists on the Egg Fleet firing and creating an explosion, Nicole hovers over a force field with her hands over her hips and actually points out that Eggman is being shown more mercy than he deserves, recommending that he retreat. Eggman finally leaves because arresting him after tying him up with rope would have been way too smart of the heroes to do, and then Sally, out of complete nowhere, gets a new, shorter hairstyle. I guess that was a little foreshadowed in retrospect by all the references to Bunny being a hairstylist and her asking Bunny for a favor in this issue. But after she says her return to the short hairstyle symbolic of her getting her mind and heart back on the right track, I kinda got annoyed because it's been that way for a while now. The real reason is painfully obvious as being a meta one, that she has that hairstyle for nostalgia reasons because she had it earlier in the comic. And Sonic calling her girly for that makes no sense because it's a short hairstyle. How is that girly? The story ends with Antoine and Bunny hugging as the heroes all celebrate. She, she, when they're married, they do way more hugging than kissing. They're more like really close friends than actual lovers. So this issue is by Ian Flint, and has surprisingly little action considering the egg fleets attacking, because there's force fields protecting the city, making me really wonder why force fields didn't exist to protect the city of the heroes every other time before this. Most of the time, it's just characters wasting time lightheartedly reminiscing, until finally Eggman is ganged up on by the heroes made to retreat instead of simply arrested. Pretty big plot hole there. And this is after Hope briefly appears, hating Snively, and saying that she's staying with the humans out of shame for trusting him even once. That's pretty illogical on her part. So yeah, that was an issue, alright. The biggest problem with the story was something I'm ashamed I only learned from reading a YouTube comment. That Sally didn't arrest Eggman when he lost his battle suit. But I'm not too mad because I understand the meta reason that if he was put in prison like all the other villains that easily, it'd be too easy happening too soon.